Ooh, what's this? Yu-Gi-Oh cannot have set rotation. Oh, anti-MBT? I wish to speak a word for Yu-Gi-Oh. For absolute freedom and design decisions as contrasted mm. with the design ethos merely technical. To regard Duelist as an inhabitant or a part and parcel <coughs> of our game, rather than a mere participant. I wish to make an extreme statement. If so, I may make an emphatic one. For there are enough champions of set rotation. <coughs> the Bussy and the Joel and every one of you will take care of that. There's been a lot of talk in the community lately about set rotation yes! and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes! What it might- yes! Has there really been a lot of talk? I feel like it's just coming in one person. Hey, Zara. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the- Thank you for the raid. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, what's up? Nothing. We're chilling. We're what we found this video after watching um a video about Thanos. And this is why Yu-Gi-Oh cannot have set rotation. So sounds like well, I, I just don't think it's like a, a big thing. It just it's really just MBT who kinda what's it called? Who kinda created it. How was your stream? Hopefully it was good. I mean for the game, should it ever be introduced? What it's done for Unpopular opinion, even in Magic, the best formats were non-rotating it was great nice and now the game kind of sucks i just think even if it got rid of power creep i don't like the idea of living on a clock chat i, I don't like i don't like the idea of because people complain about that now don't people complain about like oh you can only play a deck for a couple of formats that's where the ban list is used to power creep decks out and it's just like okay but what if you what if you literally had a system that's entire purpose was to do that you know what i mean like i don't know they they do i mean yeah people like i i don't want to i don't want to like pick up versus chat and it's like oh well i can only play this deck for one year and that's it you know what i mean they've been playing tier for two years in the ocg for the other commander major. is the most popular magic format it is not on set rotation uh legacy vintage extended when it was good and modern are the best well there you guys go let's hear what this, what this card games and the unique design elements to our game that make it more difficult to conceptualize well, cool you stream went great recently attempts have been made to introduce something akin to a rotation format and to me this was the last straw that necessitated making a video on the subject oh before we begin it might be helpful to define our terms quickly set rotation <laughs> in card games is a system by which cards and sets get taken out of the game at predetermined times Sorry, essentially this. the only cards legal for play in a competitive environment are those released within a set window everything before then is essentially banned for comparison, in Yu-Gi-Oh, a game with no set rotation, every single card that is not on the forbidden list is playable in Yu-Gi-Oh's main competitive format. Mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh's lack of a set <coughs> rotation, a gameplay element I will refer to hereafter as an open format, carries with it many upsides and downsides. And while many believe that the upsides would far outweigh the down, I, unfortunately, stand opposed to that idea. Hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh opinions tend to move like waves, and once an opinion has caught the wind, it quickly becomes canon law. Playability of certain texts, the power level of a new- That's what I've been saying! Tier format was great. Biggest biggest example ever. Yu-Gi-Oh opinions are like waves, man. Once, once, once like someone popular enough says it, chat, it just like all their cronies and all their fans are just like, ah, yeah, well, guess it's true. And it's just like, no, it actually isn't. You just have the biggest platform. You know what I mean? Tier format was the greatest thing ever. Like, that's kind of one of them. It's like, no, actually it wasn't. And all the stuff you guys complain about, like floodgates and stuff, there was like tons of floodgates in tier format. Dimensional Shifter, Abyss Dweller, Baguska, like you could do all of them in that format. So actually, no, it wasn't. New or old deck. MBT and dude, I've been saying this forever. <laughs> I've been saying, like, I, I don't have that at all. There's no chat. Is there a single popular opinion that I hold that like all of you guys share? I don't think there is one. I don't think there's a single opinion where I'm like, yep, I believe that. And everyone in this chat is just like, <laughs> yep, Cap's right. Like, no, there really isn't. You guys, do you guys disagree with me out of spite sometimes? Cap is a big streamer, susty. I don't agree with you, Cap. Uh, I'm contrarian. Max C, floodgates are fine. <laughs> Max C should, should come back. <laughs> Max C should come back so Versus has a good earth hand trap. We in the community are quick to label and define and come to conclusions. Time rending Morganite will change the game forever until it doesn't. Amazing Defenders was a worthless set until it wasn't. 
Ultimate Slayer could be the next big staple. Oh! <laughs> Why'd you have the Trash Slayer? Jeez. Dang. Now, now, you, now you've gone too far. Call it out. Uh, look, I, I love Slayer. It's like one of my favorite cards ever, but I, I am going to make a biggest flops of all time ultimate. It's just, it has to be done. And I, I love this card. Dude, they put her on a mat. There's literally an Ultimate Slayer mat, chat. They put her on a mat. Seriously. Like, Ultimate Slayer is such a cool card, but it's a flop. Big flop. Isn't. Occasionally, it is necessary to take a step back and play the Devil's Advocate. Yeah, the art's awesome. Now let's advocate for some Devils. I think it goes without saying that archetypes are a uniquely Yu-Gi-Oh! design element. Magic has synergistic deck design, don't get me wrong. <coughs> Creatures with similar types and colors can work together to form cohesive strategies, but the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game is different. Cards belonging to an archetype share the same naming convention and are designed to work with each other, Great often features. sharing complementary effects, themes, visual, and gameplay aesthetics. A Yu-Gi-Oh! archetype is more than just a collection of cards. It's a narrative shorthand for a player or character's personality. Hmm. While some have suggested keeping a core set of relevant or classic archetypes to help combat this problem, the core issue remains. What you consider to be pack filler is somebody else's favorite archetype or play style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was this was one problem I instantly had with the uh, the MBT format. Like, okay, you put Dart Magi I don't give a fuck about Dart Magician. Like, why why are we putting Dart Ma all Blackwing? Like, I don't care about like half these archetypes. Like, if if it's cap, if it's cap, it's gonna be <laughs> Luna Light, Vanquish Soul, Sal. You're just literally gonna pick the ones that I like. You know what I mean? People will just play. I mean, just beyond the point. Like, there are people out there who love my. Go to Facebook, chat. Go to Facebook and, and and join me. I'm in the freaking Nouvelles, uh, Facebook group. Like, you guys want to know some of the most popular, um, communities? I would say like literally the most well the most active communities like the hero group like heroes, Sky Striker, um, the dinosaur group like. Even even the ones where there's not a lot going on, like Madoche and in, in, in Live Twins, I'm in those groups and like don't get excited over stuff. You know what I mean? A way to curate a modern rotation format without eliminating the very reason why a sizable chunk of the player base plays the game in the first place. Yep. It might seem silly to allow anime fans and nostalgia blinded players to dictate the health of the modern competitive format. But as long as we're pretending that the issue at hand is bringing new players on board and not eliminating corner cases that old text might enable, rotating prediction princesses might well do more harm for the well-being of the game than getting a card like Mushroom Man number two out of the way ever could help. While we're on the subject <coughs> of prediction princesses, let's talk about legacy support. The big elephant in the room that could stand to be contextualized and justified. Closely tied to the previous point about archetypes, but different from both a business and player perspective. Legacy support is Konami's lifeblood, oh, and, and this is pure conjecture, likely a larger contributor to old players returning to the game than any other factor. Could you imagine a more <laughs> radical design shift than going from releasing waves of support meant to bring old beloved archetypes closer in line with modern design decisions to eliminating <laughs> those archetypes from the game completely through rotation? I've heard it said that archetypes could be reintroduced into the game whole cloth when their new support is introduced. Marincess receives a new card, and now the whole archetype is brought back into the game at low rarity, allowing the deck to be rebuilt. But what a clumsy and clogged strategy, greatly restricting the ability of Konami to create new cards in that set, necessitating more sets or some type of clause in the rotation. That sounds terrible. So you're telling me if you wanted to make, like, two Marincess cards, you'd literally have to print every Marincess card yet? Minus, like, a couple of the ones you know people won't play. Is that what you're telling me? Like you have to do for rosation? It's like, well, we want to we want to print five Marincess cards. Guess we have to print twenty eight of them. That sounds terrible. Or hey, we're making two versus cards. Guess we have to print the other 13, 15 now. But yeah, we have to print fifteen more cards. They basically they don't. No, that's not true. Like they don't have to print. Like they don't. I mean, well, we have reprint sets. You know what I mean? Which I guess wouldn't necessarily exist with the, <clears throat> what's it called? But no, that's not necessarily true. They just print the new cards. And like, you can go get the old cards. Like, figure it out. They reprint them and they reprint some in side sets. CRs. Station ...that allows members of that archetype to be played when the new support is released. This, of course, doesn't even mention cards that aren't members of the archetype exactly, but were crucial elements of that deck's end board or game Give me plan. an example. F-Zero isn't a ghost trick monster, 
but it's close enough. So, old decks receive new support and get brought into the game again. Easy, you might say, but at what rarity? It's been a decade since that Firefist card was printed. How are they going to bring it back? And for that matter, what about Ash Blossom, or Imperm, or any number of the generic spells or traps that we've come to consider staples? <laughs> Looks like Twin Twister got rotated out again, better hope Konami includes it. For a player base that considers Konami the true final boss, our Zemnis, if you will, we're certainly offering them quite a lot of power to reintroduce and control how we play cards of old. It's entirely possible that reprinting cards back into the format would allow the old printings to become legal once again, but for a company that has printed so many versions of Monster Reborn it isn't funny anymore, are we willing to risk that? A common criticism of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s open format is that cards designed by people who are now dead clash against design decisions made in the present day, allowing cards like number 89 to see meta contention so significant that it eventually gets banned, mm. or Totally Awesome brought back to such relevance through Sprite <coughs> that it led to the engine getting hit. This necessitates a few answers. Firstly, it's important to remember that the new cards, Arise Heart and Sprite Elf, if we're continuing this example, were the straws that broke the camel's back in these instances. And it's difficult to place the blame, if you will, on the old or new cards. Is Kashtira overpowered because of the interactions number 89 and 8? That's a good point. Are, the, are these cards yet overpowered because they're innately broken? Or are they overpowered because of the new decks? I'd say they're overpowered because of the new decks and, like, the things the new decks can do. Because, like, the old cards don't just become problematic out of nowhere. It's the new decks. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. Like, Toad's always been good, but... I don't know. Toad's kind of insane, but... I wouldn't necessarily be like, yo, ban Toad. Or this, this card's a prime example. It went from, like, literally no one ever played it ever to... Uh, ban this card because we have a deck that rips your extra deck and works when you banish stuff face down and it just so happens that this is the perfect combination of synergy to where this card's insane now uh like smoke grenade infernobles was the problem um this ba isn't this what happened uh, help was nuts with a lot of stuff though i don't know wait wait wait, wait. are you saying you saying the tuners or are you saying how yeah, yeah, yeah if you're saying uh, Hulk was the problem the entire time, and like the tuners weren't the mecha fan of Beast of Lion or something, then yeah, yeah, yeah. It allows you to extend for an eternity <laughs> without normal summoning. And while we're on the subject of Kashtira, is it an annoying that an ancient card like the aforementioned Mushroom Man number two can prove a thorn in the deck's side? Or is that fantastic and awesome and something that we want to preserve? For every degenerate piece of cardboard that facilitates something stupid in a modern deck, old and dusty texts rise up and become playable in a way that makes the theory crafting and experimentation of this game something fascinating. I'm sure someone will look at this and say, "Re floodgates, floodgates, bad, ah! And instead of like looking at the actual point that he's making, someone would do, someone would do that. They'd be like, I guarantee you if it was someone's like Twitch chat, that, that's 100% what they would say. Rather than like actually looking at the point he's making chat, Looking at a card like Bull Blader being able to out like Genlop people just like ah or Didi Didi Warrior Lady chat that saw play um, <clears throat> when Necros was good Didi Warrior Ladies a card came out in Dark Crisis like 2004 and yet it saw play during Necros which is like 2013 14 something like that a decade later as an out to Genlock but you know some people be like uh floodgates floodgates bad video bad and it's like okay rise up and become playable in a way that makes the theory crafting <laughs> and experimentation of this game something fascinating to witness formats come and go but the band played on let's address the notion of simplifying the game for a moment <laughs> now i don't want to accuse anybody of concern trolling but the amount of times i've heard that Yu-Gi-Oh is too complicated for new players in one breath followed by explaining that Konami could easily create a comprehensive Yu-Gi-Oh! rulebook because Magic the Gathering has one, and it's much more complicated, and the next breath is frustrating beyond comprehension. Players Yo! I think, he, I, I think this is literally calling out MBT. Explaining that Konami could easily create a comprehensive Yu-Gi-Oh! rulebook because Magic the Gathering has one, and it's much more complicated, and the next breath is frustrating beyond comprehension. <laughs> Players aren't not joining our game because it's too complicated. Players aren't joining our game because card games aren't and never will be mainstream. And the popularity of video games that are much more entertaining for spectators to follow will perpetually keep it that way. Yu-Gi-Oh! takes as long to get a solid grasp on as Pokemon, or Magic the Gathering, or League of Legends, or Woodworking. Hobbies take investment and people who are interested will make that investment. If anything, the idea of comprehensively codifying rules will have a greater impact on simplifying the game than rotating out old cards ever will. 
New players won't care one iota that Salamandrate is no longer playable. Old players certainly will. And I find it far more likely that you lose more players cutting out old cards than you will ever hope to gain. I don't mean for this to come across too aggressive or know-it-all-ish. Believe me, that isn't the purpose of this. I just hear quite a lot of talk very confidently pointed in one direction and strongly believe the opposite position. This, combined with the frequency in which these same platforms seek to disparage our collective hobby by other means, forces me to question their motives. Do we love this game or not? Why are we all here? Is this something that could be solved with a more responsive and flexible <clears throat> banless policy change? What actually annoys us here? I don't want to pretend that I have all the answers. Yeah, real and- talk, real talk. That that's 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 some real stuff. Like, do you do like half the people on Twitter, do you actually like this game or not? Seriously. And I'm not saying that you can't complain. Uh, in hopes of things becoming better, chat. Like, you do that with the country, you do that with the government, you do that with schools, everything, right? Like, any any problem in the world. However, like, when it comes to your hobby, something, like, you choose to spend your time and money on, you know what I mean? Like, when you go to school, like, eh, you don't, you don't choose that. Like, that's, that's, that's something that acts as, like, mandated, you know what I mean? Government, same thing, you vote, but it's like, you don't choose, you don't choose the laws in your state, you know what I mean? But, like, your hobbies, you have a full choice on that. Like, do you love them or not? Like, I'm, I don't know, Jay. I've, I've been enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot this year. Like, seriously. What's... Tw-